think not I love him. Though I ask for him, tis but a peevish boy. Yet he talks well. But what care I for words? Yet words do well when he that speaks them pleases those that hear. It's a pretty youth. Not very pretty, but sure he's proud, and yet his pride becomes him. He'll make a proper man. The best thing in him is his complexion, which even as his tongue did give offence, his eye did heal it up. He's not very tall, yet for his years he's tall. His leg is but so, so, and yet tis well. There was a pretty redness in his lips. A little riper and more lusty red than that mixed in his cheeks. T'was just the difference between the constant red and mingled damask. There be some women, had they marked him in parcels as I did, would have gone near to fall in love with him. But for my part, I love him not, nor hate him not. And yet I had more cause to hate him than to love him. But what had he to do to chide at me? He said mine eyes were black and my hair black, and now I am remembered, scorned at me. I marvel why I answered not again. But that's all one. Omittance is no quittance. I'll write to him a very taunting letter. As an unperfect actor on the stage, who with his fear is put besides his part, or some fierce thing replete with too much rage, whose strength's abundance weakens his own heart. So I, for fear of trust, forget to say the perfect ceremony of love's right, and in mine own love's strength seem to decay, I were charged with the burden of mine own love's might. O oh, let my books be then the eloquence, and dumb presages of my speaking breast who plead for love, and look for recompense more than that tongue that more hath more expressed. O oh, learn to read what silent love hath writ. To hear with eyes belongs to love's fine wit. Glams thou art, and Cordor, and shall be what thou art promised. Yet do I fear thy nature is too full of the milk of human kindness to catch the nearest way. Thou wouldst be great, art not without ambition, but without the illness should attend it. What thou wouldst highly, thou wouldst thou holily, would not play false, and yet wouldst wrongly win. Thou hast great glams, that which cries, thus thou must do if thou have it, and that which thou dost fear to do, then wishes should be undone. Hie thee hither, that I may pour my spirits in thine ear, and chastise with the valour of my tongue all that impedes thee from the golden round, which fate and metaphysical aid doth seem to have thee crowned with all. Alas, poor Yorick, I knew him fellow of infinite jest, of most excellent fancy. He hath borne me on his back a thousand times, and now how abhorred in my imagination it is. My gorge rises at him. Here hung those lips that I have kissed, I know not how oft. Oh, where be your jibes now, your gambols? Your songs, your flashes of merriment that were wont to set the table on a roar. Not one now to mock your own grinning. Quite chap fallen. Now get you to my lady's chamber. Tell her, let her paint an inch thick. To this favour she must come. Make a laugh at that. How oft, when thou my music music playest upon that blessed wood, 
whose motion sounds with thy sweet fingers, when thou gently swayest the wiry concord that mine ear confounds, do I envy those jacks that nimble leap to kiss the tender inward of thy hand, whilst my poor lips, which should that harvest reap, at the wood's boldness by thee blushing stand, to be so tickled they would change their state and situation with those dancing chips, o'er whom thy fingers walk with gentle gait, making dead wood more blessed than living lips. Since saucy jacks so happy are in this, give them thy fingers, me thy lips to kiss. My mistress' eyes are nothing like the sun. Coral is far more red than her lips red. If snow be white, why then her breasts are done. If hairs be wires, black wires grow on her head. I have seen roses damasked red and white, but no such roses see I in her cheeks. And in some perfumes is there more delight than in the breath that from my mistress reeks. I love to hear her speak, yet well I know that music hath a far more pleasing sound. I grant I never saw a goddess go, my mistress when she walks, treads on the ground. And yet by heaven, I think my love as rare as any she belied with false compare.